Hello and welcome to RevisionTuition.com. My name is Simon and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about respiration and the bloodstream. Now I'm going to break this down into smaller topics of aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration and the constituents of the blood. Okay, now before we cover the topic of respiration, it's important that you know that there is a difference between breathing and respiration. Most people confuse the two. Now, breathing is the process of taking air into the lungs and then back out of the lungs. Respiration, however, is a chemical reaction that happens inside every single one of your cells. Now, that chemical reaction takes in glucose and produces energy. Now, the energy could be used to help muscles contract, to build larger molecules from smaller molecules, or to maintain body temperature. Now, there are two different types of respiration, two types of respiration. First of all, we're going to cover aerobic respiration. Now, aerobic, an easy way of remembering the difference between the two types of respiration, anaerobic and aerobic, aerobic respiration is using air. Okay, and in particular, it's using the oxygen from the air. So for aerobic respiration, you need to take in glucose and oxygen. And when those two are taken in, they react together to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. Now the important thing from this reaction is that it produces the energy that's needed for muscle contractions, building up larger molecules, or to maintain the temperature. But these two things, the carbon dioxide and the water, are given off as waste products. Okay, so just briefly again, glucose and oxygen taken in and produced are carbon dioxide and water which are waste products and energy which is used by the body. Now that's the type of reaction that takes place if there's enough oxygen present. If there's not enough oxygen to supply the needs, the energy needs, then we use anaerobic respiration. Now, anaerobic is without air, without the oxygen from the air. So this time, it's just glucose which is taken into the body, and that produces lactic acid and energy. Now, the lactic acid will build up in the body, and it's a toxin for the body. So that lactic acid needs to be removed after exercising. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the constituents in the bloodstream. Now the reason why I'm talking about the constituents of the blood is because it's the blood which carries the oxygen to the site of respiration and carries the carbon dioxide away from the site of aerobic respiration. Now, the heart actually acts as a pump to push this blood around the body to drop off the oxygen, pick up the carbon dioxide, it then comes back to the heart before going around a separate circuit, which is called the pulmonary circuit, where it drops off that carbon dioxide and picks up more oxygen. Now, if you'd like to know more about the, the structure of the heart and the function of the circulatory system, please watch the tutorial by Dr. Timothy Chico. Now, onto the structure of the, the bloodstream and the constituents of the bloodstream. First of all, we have these red blood cells. Now, red blood cells are not strictly cells because they don't have their own nucleus. They, they have a biconcave disc shape, so they're a disc shape, but they've got a kind of a, a dent on both sides, which gives them two concaves. Now, this is to increase their surface area so they can pack as much oxygen onto them as possible. So first thing, they've got that biconcave disc shape, so they've got a large surface area. Also, the fact that they don't have a nucleus increases the surface area for absorption of oxygen as well. Now, they carry a protein called haemoglobin. Now, this haemoglobin picks up oxygen. They also, like I said, they have no nucleus. Now, there's other constituents of the blood as well. There's white blood cells. Now, they look a little bit like a fried egg, but quite often they have different lobes to their nucleus. So, the job of the white blood cells is to defend the body. 
Now, they'll engulf any microorganisms that they find in the bloodstream, any bacteria or any viruses, to get rid of them from the bloodstream. They'll also produce two chemicals to fight off these microorganisms. They'll produce antibodies and antitoxins. Now, this will be covered in a bit more depth in a future tutorial. Also, there's blood plasma. Now, blood plasma is the liquid part of the blood. It's a straw-coloured, kind of a light yellow-coloured liquid. Now, it carries the glucose, which is also needed for respiration, both aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. It carries that glucose to all the cells in the body where it can be used to produce the energy. The blood plasma picks up the glucose from the small intestine where it's broken down and it's absorbed into the blood from our food. The plasma also carries dissolved carbon dioxide and it, is, it carries that dissolved carbon dioxide from where respiration takes place, from where aerobic respiration takes place, back up to the lungs where it can diffuse across the wall of the lungs and into the air that we breathe out. Now finally we have platelets. Now platelets look like tiny little fragments of cells, little tiny pieces of cells and the job of those platelets is to help the blood clot. So if you cut yourself you don't continue losing blood. Okay, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Like I said, if you'd like to learn a bit more about the heart and the structure and function of the circulatory system, please watch Dr. Timothy Chico's lecture and please visit the website. Goodbye.